At some point, we thought it should be uh, there's a very some deficiency in Indian higher education institutions. Then, some of the law, it may not be deficient, it's possibly deficient. But uh, there are elements of both, there is an element of deficit and there is an element of deficiency because of the deficit. Let me talk a bit about the deficit part to start with uh, uh, before we uh, start with the main event. As of 2018, uh, from the data from 18 IIMs, from 590, out of the 590 faculty positions, Faculty that were higher at that point of time, 94.1 percent belong to unreserved category or general category as something wrongly referred as, and 4.3 percent were from other backward classes, 1.3 percent were from second class, and 0.2 percent were from second class. So to get a magnitude of this, like this is a group which can handle 100 faculty. So if we put 10 of these rooms, 12 faculty of IM who have been hired at different points of time, in these 10 rooms, we will find 3 SPs. And we will be finding 13 SPs. That is the way things have happened at IIMs. Let's look at IITs. I am explaining the order. So, this is data again from 23 IITs, where 5,375 faculty have been hired till that point of time. 90.7% of the faculty were from undeserved or they were in category as a preferred as at times, and 6.1% were from Uplixi, 2.84% were from FC, and 0.4% were from Shady employees. Once again, if 5375, okay, so 5375, that is 50 of these groups of IIT faculties would have had some 10 SCs. And let's look at it a bit more on uh, central universities. As of 2021, bit of later data, two, out of 2272 faculty positions sanctioned for schedule class and 1154. See position sanction for scheduled tribes, 45% of the SCC and 51% of the SCC remain vacant. Or remain vacant is a wrong word, they left and that is a better word. And it's ignored 45% of SCC, 40% of SCC lay vacant. Triple IT, 63% of SCC, 88% of SCC lay vacant. So, this is a deficit that acts across geography, across levels, across disciplines, across all kinds of institutes. Even though we don't have any deficits in some institutes, it is just that we are not filed the RPI yet. That is the situation. Otherwise, everywhere, so it has remained the same. So, such, such whole scale, whole scale, whole scale, large scale deficit means. There is also a deficiency in Indian academia. The missing Dalit documents is followers. It is not such just a problem for the Dalits and Adivasis. It's a problem for the institutes. They are, they are deficient in their mission. They are deficient in their mobility. They can't, they can't see the society clearly. They just see a blur vision of the society. If they hire largely from 10% of the social strata, and that too largely many from that 10 percent of the social standard, how do you think such societies, such institutes, can have a vision of what is happening in the society? How these institutes can bring in a uh, chart of the academic future or intellectual future for a nation that is in dire need of it? I don't think it is possible at all. And this panel is going to talk about a bit more about the deficit but also may hopefully maybe make you reflect on the deficiencies that are caused because of this persistent and cutting across deficit that is that we are seeing. And uh, that will be the theme of the panel discussion today. And uh, for this uh, to chair this session, we have with us uh, our very own um, Dr. Jay Silan Raj. He gives 
I would say among the staff, faculty at CBS. Uh, he is a postdoctoral fellow uh, from London School of Economics. He did his PhD from University of Bergen. He works in the areas of politics and development, culture and development, labor and environment, and migration, social security and migration. He teaches uh, labor and labor economics and ethnography and anthropology at CBS. He has written various books. Uh, one of the books is Ground Down by Growth. Uh, of which was also translated as Vikas ki Jarki Ben Piste Lok. He is a recipient of 10th NIA fellowship where he is writing a book on egalitarian paradox, Dalits on the state in Kerala. Recently, he is completing a book titled Plantation Crisis, The Ruptures of Dalit Life in the Indian Tea Bed. And recently, I, I also got my book in the TV. We are very excited to. <laughs> Uh, we are uh, looking forward to the book to get released. Uh, it would not be an uh, exaggerated statement to say that he has uh, expanded the scholarship horizon experience with his work and uh, with another 30 to 40 years of active academic life. Uh, he has a lot of interesting books from him and important books from him. And uh, uh, from now I will ask. I, Floor is yours, Dr. Raj, and we can take the time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, particularly to we can be able to and the only level is I to be here again to come over and then from Calico. And also uh, thanks to SEST so to organize uh, this important you know, event also to think about the presentation of diversity in Indian higher education institution. It's a very important topic. And also thanks from the Kaku for a very, very Generous, too generous introduction. Um, so I'm here to chair the session. So before I introduce uh, the speakers, I will just do um, a what statement from an anthropologist thinking about institutions, merit, caste. And so I just want to uh, insist. That if you have time, please look at the book on the cost of merit functioning in education in India, written by a Harvard anthropologist. Um, it's a somehow connected to Putin's uh, previous institution projects. And an important point in Professor Subramanian's book is that caste is socially constructed, caste is socially situated. Therefore, Merit is also socially situated and socially constructed. So you can't talk about merit as something that exists outside caste. Whereby those who argue that merit exists outside caste and indeed casteless, but claims to be casteless. That's that's their point. So I, you know, insisting on that, I just want to say that any institutions, including our, is a beneficiary of castes that it exists as a consequence of a particular social structure that nobody can deny. And paradoxically, many institutions deny diversity by not engaging with the structure that they are part of. You know, it's an attempt to run away from the structure. By denying the structure, we are denying inclusion. And, and we have examples of institutions which were, who are written to government saying that they should be excluded from implementing the solution because they are institutional of excellence and, and broadly associated uh, excellence with not including uh, employed people from certain communities. And maybe that's that something comes to my mind as an anthropologist who always think everything is socially situated and you can't talk about anything. 
outside the social security of this phenomenon. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to chair the session and welcome the two speakers. We will go with uh, Mr. O.P. Ravindran first, then uh, Dr. Vipin Viviti. Uh, they will speak for about 20 25 minutes each, then, they, then we will take questions from TikTok. Uh, and let me introduce the speakers. Uh, first, Mr. O.P. Ravindran. Uh, so I will read it from here first and then explain my association with um, OP. That's how friends call it. My friend for a long time. So OP Ravindran is a Bengal social activist in Kerala who spent nearly two decades ensuring the educational rights of the Dalits, Adivasis, and other marginalized sections of the society. He was an active member of Dalit students movement during his student life. The notable work of OP Ravindran came in 2016. With an editor book title, Rohit Bhamada, later to get it mean Vindu Nakshatrangani, with writings of Rohit Bhamada translated to Madhyam. Later, through the book title, Pudu Gyalaya Sarangate Sogali Kovani in 2019. And you can see the book here, this page here. So, if anyone wants to buy the book later, uh, please uh, come to uh, my text in Madhyam. So, the book here lies. The social pattern of staff recruitment in publicly funded, privately on government aided education institutions, institutes both school as well as higher education institutes. Kerala. He argued through the book that Dalit and Adivasi communities in Kerala have not been equally represented in these institutes, even though they depend heavily on the state budget, building and institutes, thereby violating the principles of social justice ancient in the constitution. Opi Ravindran is a popular face in different seminars in Kerala related to caste and social justice, and he also published extensively in different Malayalam journals and magazines. As of now, it is the convening of Aiden Megara Samvarnan Prakshoda Samadhi that works for ensuring preservation in Indian schools and college institutions. Uh, Teaching and in, in teaching among teaching points. So, uh, I was a student in University College in 2004, second year of history. That's when a very tragic incident of uh, suicide uh, uh, this uh, student was denied uh, back on uh, and revolution and was studying in a private engineering college. And I remember as I was working. Um, in front of secretary that I see her saying I saw Opie Ravindran is that he was the one who went on gun hunger strike demanding to us. And he has uh, single handedly organized many successful hunger strikes. Single handedly, which means he just went along and just started hunger strike. Uh, but I mean he is uh, an ideal for me, a great friend and I respect him a lot for his and for Social justice. And uh, the second speaker, uh, Dr. Vivian P. Bitti, who is quite. Uh, yeah, so uh, who is quite popular and famous now, is recently in news um, as he struggled with social injustice in his uh, previous institution. And uh, Dr. Uh, Vivian Bitti was a faculty at the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, Madras. Uh, and now he has joined the Indian Institute of Management Committee. So before joining IIT Madras, he was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Paris, Sorbonne. He did his PhD from George Mason University in uh, Dr. Vitin's research interest spans across a wide range of the ranges of the issues in even microeconomics, Monetary economics, production networks, agent based computational economics, and non determined processes. I don't know what does it mean, maybe you can explain later. Um, he has published widely in reputed economic journals. Importantly, he has been a forceful voice against class based discrimination and harassment at IIT Madras. He has constantly been prodding IIT Madras to implement class based preservation in an unbiased manner and has documented. Ways in which the institute has evaded implementation of uh, reservation. His articles and interviews related to various issues of past discrimination, 
uh, issues of representation at Indian higher education institutions have appeared in various uh, newspapers and online news outlets. So, we have made it the two speakers uh, for today complement each other in uh, being able to talk about uh, what's going on in Kerala's higher education institutions while uh, uh, the Indian could uh, reflect on sort of a national scene, particularly what's going on and in what we call as premium research institutions in the country. And both are scholars and both are activists uh, and, and that's something they uh, share. So, uh, let me invite uh, Oki Ravindran first to speak for 20 to 25 minutes. Then we will go on to Dr. Ravindran. Good. Thank you. First of all, I have my thanks to the uh, system and uh, really uh, my friends. Uh, and Tiyadu and Abhiram. Uh, I am not confident, oh, sorry, I am not a friend in I am confident in Madhyam. Anyway, I will uh, put some data in front of you. Again, Kerala uh, and the depression uh, and the uh, explosion of the uh, SC, SC categories the map of depression of Kerala. Uh, I think Malayalis know what is the uh, what how the Kerala education system uh, going on. But some of other students I think uh, they don't know well how it functions. So I today uh, describe something that Kerala education system uh, works in different support. One is public education, secondly private education, unaided institutions, and self-financing institutions. Public institutions contain uh, government institutions and uh, aided institutions. Aided institution means government will give aid uh, as salary uh, and pensions and other aid. The private management, private manager of any government institution, that is the aided institution. So, our public institution, public education institution is 
contain two uh, players, one is agent, second is uh, non entity. The major player is agent management. That is, I will show some data. Uh, 2002-2011, uh, colleges, high school, UP school, MP school, uh, and total. Uh, 11,969 uh, institutions in Kerala. It is 4,540 uh, institutions in the government and 7,489 in Aid Center. That is 61.11% is in Aid Center. In uh, colleges, a science academy, higher educational system, higher uh, education. Colleges are 189. Governments, under governments, only 89. And aided sector, there is 150 uh, colleges. That is 79.3 percentage is in aided sector. The teacher recognizes for the presentations uh, same year. Institutions uh, total 1,68,376 teachers are working. Uh, in this government sector, 56,249 in government and 1,30,000 in the sector. That is 66.59%. Teachers are part of the aided sector. Uh, Why we putting the college uh, as uh, the higher education? Uh, total teachers, 9,534. The government, 2,335. And in the aided sector, there is 7,199 teachers are working. Aided colleges. SCST teachers in the government sector, say, uh, year 2010, 2011. Uh, total uh, teachers is uh, 56,249. SC uh, teachers is uh, 5,606. SC teachers, uh, sorry, ST teachers. 10.65. That is nearly 10.9 seven percentage in the market in government institutions. SCST teachers represent in the aided sector. Colleges are thousand uh, and one ninety nine. Colleges are about ten percent. Uh, in that, 10 teachers in uh, SC and 1 teacher in SC. Uh, this is uh, 0.15 percentage is SC SD teachers. And total, I told you, school and this school, and there are total teacher number 1 lakh 2001. SC total teachers. 361 ST teacher is 97. This total percentage is 0.40. Teaching and non teaching from a standard candidate sector 2014 15. We just uh, said that in the 2010 level. Yeah, what this is so 2014 yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, in the uh, 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 33 and number of non teaching staff is uh, 300, 3, 3, 725. 
teachers and the non-teaching staff to their volunteers. Level thousand of land, hundred times five eight. A CST representation is six five or sixty five only. That is nearly zero point one five four percentage is a CST teachers. Engineering college, uh, three engineering college educated center, teachers and non-teachers staff uh, are eight hundred and eighty nine. SCST representation is only. That is zero point four percent. Polytechnic, there is six uh, polytechnic in the uh, sector. Total teachers and uh, non teachers are uh, 1,369. SCST, that is 0.29%. BHSC, number 128. Uh, teachers and the non-teaching staff uh, 2,225 SCSD representation is only 8 and it is near 0 0.35. Our education, sorry, I am secondary, 5, 8, 5 and secondaries and uh, the teachers, non-teaching staff, uh, 40,326 SCSD representation is uh, 34, that is uh, 0 0.23 High school, uh, 1,459 teachers uh, and non-teaching staff, probably 38,000 uh, 38, uh, one uh, one eight one one six now, I have one eight one six total. Uh, teachers and non teaching staff thirty four thousand and nine two six. As you think, the presentation is one two, that is zero point three five percent. LP uh, two thousand nine eight one students in the sector. Total teachers and non teaching staff uh, forty thousand. 268 SC and the state of the only. That is uh, 0 0.59. Total institution in public and key public year. 801 to 8. Total teachers 1 lakh 29,000 and 600. Uh, Not teaching uh, staff 14,000. 
it is a curve sinking magnitude of the yes that is 6 for x and 6 6 for x yes and then two uh, number three that is some time that is why magnitude uh, one to one point five then sub three magnitude and magnitude then uh, this um uh, the budget allocation can be given in situation of 2019. Eight special sports, eight colleges, eight polytechnic, colleges. Total uh, eighty thousand. Uh, this report is for the uh, management and the institutional holding. This uh, 18,000 pro is shared by the four that is about 47 percent of the uh, 18,000 uh, pro shared by investors and uh, 90 uh, percentage both to the three management and uh, 11 uh, percent goes to uh, SML, 10 percent goes to NSS, uh, that is the uh, uh, division. This kind of uh, uh, division or uh, distribution is happening. He is distributed by this thing. And uh, what is the SDSP uh, representation for how, uh, um, how this money is handled by the SCST community? This means it is the salvage and pension for 586. That is the total representation of the uh, radio teachers in the sector. That is a huge problem, but uh, this is uh, normally handy Kerala model. That is the main issue. At this exclusion, there is a long history of adult institutions in Kerala. And each of the uh, states, uh, management have uh, came forward and brought the government. Uh, Travancore, 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 uh, Against the national policy of the current government, that is history. And see, in 1957, the uh, the city government, the city was the first elected uh, in Kerala, first elected uh, education minister. He introduced the uh, education bill. Same the uh, management. And this is when the market uh, management came forward in 2015. And the uh, government uh, changed the section uh, of uh, section 11. In the uh, education section, uh, education bill, there was section 11. There was a American bill. What did it be? And those two. Uh, yes, uh, but this is uh, and against the uh, vision of management and the management came uh, against it, uh, this uh, issue. But the government uh, uh, passed the bill in Nam uh, Sabha, but the, uh, the government signed that and it goes to the Supreme Court. 
and so we got the um, uh, verified that the computer should be, and finally we got a six number which the number of six times declared that this education field is not against the very fundamental rights of the very fundamental rights of the the same for the different class minority. There are no laws. Students participate. 
They included a clause that 20% of the seats uh, from the student, that is to uh, is for SCLC students. But then it did introduce a subversion to the cost of each and not each stuff. That's it. And I think that it is a Please allow me to begin by thanking you for uh, having me over at CBS. Uh, it, it's really uh, been a wonderful experience so far. Uh, um, and uh, thank you for coming to the uh, uh, talk. Uh, let, me, uh, let me begin by saying that I'm going to leave the more sophisticated things to uh, Dr. Jayashik. So, in the sense of merit and cast. Okay, I'm going to actually begin with, uh, with sort of the usual economist way by, uh, you know, in, in a simpler word, and I'll stick to my simpler words, okay? So, <laughs> you can trust me uh, you know, once the talk is over. But, um, uh, yeah. assume for instance, assume for instance that you live in a society where people do have class-based preferences. Yeah. Assume for instance you live in a society where people do have class-based preferences. The question is that when you see the numbers of the kind that uh, uh, Mr. Hopi just showed us, or numbers of the kind that, uh, you know, Professor Tiago was talking about earlier, right? How do we sort of uh, uh, distinguish between, uh, you know, as whether these disproportionalities represent or are an outcome of uh, preferences, right, and hence discrimination, right? Or are they an outcome of uh, historical differences in uh, skill acquisition, right? Right, because if they are indeed, a, uh, if the matter is merely one of historical differences in skill acquisition, then the sort of our approach towards resolving the problem is merely one of, sort of facilitating skill acquisition for all communities. Right. Whereas if it's one of uh, a, a, an outcome of discrimination, right, then our approach has to be sort of slightly different. Uh, 
Uh, my own impression is that uh, it's very difficult. So, from so my own experience, that I've seen no econometric studies which distinguish between the two, right? A, a, a sizable studies for the country as a whole. So, this is something that sort of very much remains to be done. Right? So, the question is asked uh, that uh, suppose you take the you know SC community and say 15 percent of the population, but their representation in higher education institutions is only five percent. Right? How would we account for the remaining 10 percent? Right? Is, are they, is, are, is, does it reflect historical differences in uh, in skill sets, right? Or does it reflect differences in uh, explicit discrimination? And I have seen no econometric study which sort of tells us uh, what is going on at the level of the country. Okay. So this is sort of uh, the big unknown uh, when it comes to caste and discussion about caste and higher education and education more generally. Again. But nonetheless, my own impression is that it's very difficult to rule out. Uh, discrimination, the fact that discrimination, or in fact, for the rest of the talk, I'm not going to use the word discrimination. I'm going to stick to the more neutral phase, caste preference, and the expression of caste preferences, amongst other preferences, right? Uh, uh, it's very difficult to say that they don't play a significant role. Right? Uh, and in some senses, you can begin with, uh, with sort of uh, uh, the question of what is the incentive? So what is the incentive within the uh, education system in India? Uh, and I you know, come to the Kerala uh, bit that uh, uh, Mr. Opie was pointing to it a bit. But what is the sort of incentive in the education system in India for the bureaucrats who do the hiring to actually not express their caste preferences? Right? Indeed, the, the definition of a preference from an economic point of view is that you get some utility or benefit or happiness, welfare, call it what you like, by expressing it. Right? And the only reason not to express it is to bear some cost for having expressed it. Right? So, if indeed you are, you are to encounter two candidates, Right? One of your own caste and one of one from a different caste, right? There's very little incentive in, in, in the system for you not to express your caste preference and, and, uh, and hire the candidate of your own caste, even if he or she happens to be the less productive employee. Right? Ultimately, your salaries are guaranteed uh, by the government of India or some sort of a state government. Right? You, your salaries do not depend on the productivity of the people you hire. Right? So there's very little in the system per se to not express your caste preference. Yes. So, wherever the debate, especially if you sort of uh, give the debate in the popular press, it begins by saying, uh, you know, uh, reservations, but what about merit? The presumption is somehow the existing uh, system of education, predominantly government education in India, right, actually uh, hires people on the basis of merit. Okay. But if you, from an economic point of view, there's equal reason for the people within the system to hire on the basis of merit at all. Right. Uh, so, uh, and to get sort of to the nuances of, of this, right? so when I was working at, uh, at my previous institution, uh, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to see um, uh, what was called a special recruitment trial. Right? This was, a, you know, Delhi sort of put its foot down and said, look, you know, a far two people from uh, scheduled class, scheduled tribes and other backward uh, classes, right, uh, you have got to recruit uh, some people from these groups. So, there is actually a memo sent from Delhi saying that not only do this, but let us know every month, right, and put it in your annual book. This was sort of a serious stuff, right. Uh, so, when your financier calls, right, it's serious. Right? That's the only time things get serious, right. So, Delhi did, uh, uh, you know, make it very clear. Now, uh, one thing I noticed in the special recruitment drive was there was an attempt uh, uh, to um, advertise relatively narrow areas. So, give me an example. Uh, we at the department, uh, at, the, sort of, at the, the lowest levels, had recommended and formally and minuted the meetings to advertise political science. When the advertisement came out, the field had to change political theory. Now, political theory is an area where the department as a whole had not found anyone for, for, for a few years. And political theory is an area which is very difficult to find someone who's done his, uh, his or her doctoral degree in political theory from Yale and wanting to come and teach in Chennai. And political science in the area is a little bit more, little bit easier to find people. And this is just sort of one example. Right? We had asked for economics general to be advertised, but it not applied economics was that. And again, uh, you know, um, this is sort of the first step. So the advertisement itself can involve a certain expression of class problems. Right? So you advertise very narrow areas, then you say, well, look, we just haven't found people. Right? So we haven't found suitable candidates. And, the, and, and you, you don't fill up the reserve post, so to say. The next stage in which caste preferences can enter is, you know, how do you shortlist people? Right? If you have an entrance exam, 
like you have for like, undergraduate students in some places or you know, MA students or some places, that can be objective. But beginning from sort of the doctoral degree onwards, right, especially in faculty recruitment, if people, you know, suppose even if you advertise uh, you know, uh, economics generally, right, and you get a bunch of people. Now you've got people who have PhDs from various different universities, have published at different places, right, potentially show different uh, uh, sort of uh, future trajectories, right, because their letter of reference will in some sense speak of their future trajectories. Now to choose between these, there is a fair amount of uh, judgment involved. Right. Again, here even the question of merit within caste, who do you choose? Suppose you know you were to, you know you got you know ten candidates in the scheduled class. Right. All exceptionally promising. Who do you choose? I me, mean, if I had caste as I would choose the most subservient, and the one who's likely to cost me the least amount of trouble as the years go by. Right? So the system intrinsically is not driven towards uh, recruiting people on the basis of, of merit. This is something that uh, um, what's it called? Uh, shortlisting stage. Now, once you shortlist candidates, there comes the interview stage. Right? I can sort of guarantee, and I don't have to sort of ask the professor here. The doctoral students here, they, they would easily be able to, if they were put on a committee to ask questions and interview me, in, and I say monetary economics, it would be trivial for them to pick a question for monetary economics where I'd pay Right? And it would also be trivial for them to pick a question for monetary economics where I'd accept. And so it's, it's trivial to sort of pick, uh, you know, make sure you ask the questions where the candidates do well or ask the questions where the candidates do well. It is sort of uh, like, trivial, right? right? So at each stage of sort of faculty recruitment, there is the potential for expressing task preferences. And there is very little incentive in the system not to do so. Now, what do we do about this? Like, what do we do about this at the system again? And there are kind of the big sort of messages that uh, the demand curve for discrimination is down or so. Okay, just like the demand curve for potatoes or bananas or whatever it is. Right? Higher the cost of discrimination, lower will be the demand for discrimination. So how do you impose high cost of discrimination on bureaucrats within the government system? Right? You don't build systems uh, based on the goodwill of people. Right? You don't, a system is not robust if it has to depend on good men and women. System is robust if it depends on good incentives. Right? So even if you replace the wonderful human being at the top and put someone who is obnoxious, a robust system is one which would still yield very similar results. Okay, so how do you kind of impose cost? You create a system where you know discrimination is faced with high cost, and there are indeed two ways to do this: in the market process and there is the political process. Okay, and what I have engaged in the last sort of six or seven months is the political process, and I can tell you that uh, it's been uh, severely costly uh, for my mental health. Uh, it's also been severely costly for my sort of research. Right, uh, and uh, you know, financially, you know, well, I was bankrupt before I began, so I'm a little more bankrupt than I was. <laughs> but, uh, but then, it actually, worked, then you know how the political process works, right? So you can you can petition at different levels of government, beginning from your department to the director at your institute. You can go up to the Ministry of Education, and you know at that level there is an additional secretary who's in charge of all the IITs. You can even go petition to the parliamentarians. Right? I've done all of that, and right? it's you know cited documentation. The, the, some results do come out, right? But you've got to understand that when you engage in the political process, ultimately it all depends. Ulti the ultimate sort of why is the political system responsive to us, right? If there's a king sitting at the top, uh, he or she, you know, or a queen sitting at the top, he or she may have, uh, you know, a wide variety of items, but perhaps religious or traditional institutions are responsive to us. But within our system, right, our politicians are responsible for the elections that happen every four years. Right? And elections we vote for bundles of votes. Right? Every vote we give is for bundles of things, you know, national defense, water, electricity, local roads, uh, you know, law and order, right? quality of uh, education, pollution, right? what not. Right? And the fancy and the idea to which we take fancy on that particular day. Right? So one discrimination against one person or one discrimination against one group. This particularly true of uh, 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 you know groups which are in minority schedule caste. In most districts are not a sizable part of the population, 10 to 20 percent at most. Many districts even lower, right? So the ability to exert pressure through the political process is fairly limited. It's a coarse process, right? So my own impression is that if, if we, if there, there, is, there may be greater hope uh, in the market process. And then what do I mean by the market process? They essentially, I'm borrowing from Gary Becker's uh, work on discrimination, and uh, you know, I, I, I feel that uh, you know 
market may be the way to go to reduce uh, discrimination uh, in and how so in two ways on the supply side my impression is that it could really help to uh, open up uh, the possible reduce regulation for the opening of uh, new universities right uh, this include private universities but also universities from outside of it right so for instance i do hear that in the oxfords and the harvards of the world do want to open up campuses in india but there are plenty of regulations which struggle in the old day of course you know uh, they were going to bring imperialism to india but the elite children were immune to imperialism they could go study at you know the harvards and oxfords that was okay now of course there is a threat to sort of our natural culture whatever that means uh, but of course the elite children you know elite students could continue to go there right So I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Jayshree and Mudapur. Wouldn't it be nice to have a Harvard campus in Trivandrum to where we can apply, or, you know, uh, with the with right? And so it's important to have sort of competing uh, buyers of of our service, right? That would indeed because there is sort of uh, you know a disgruntled employee can ex. Okay, this again goes back to the old 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 uh, old Hirschman paper. Uh, voice and exit. You know, when do you voice and when do you ex? Right, so the market solution looks at creating more exit options. The other side of the market solution is to right, is to make sure that exit is costly. See, under the present government system, even if you have a, a you know productive uh, you know, uh, employee who has to speak from the schedule tribe, uh, and you know, one discriminates against that person, the person is so disappointed and in such pain that she leaves. Right? Even if you create alternatives, that particular institution doesn't face much of a cost. Under the present system, suppose she leaves for a Harvard campus nearby, that institution still doesn't face much of a cost. So one way to make this happen is to stop funding universities and fund students instead. This indeed seems to be the big problem with the Kerala model. The government actually funds university bureaucrats, right, instead of students. So if you have student vouchers, the students get vouchers which you could take in university. You could study at RIT, or you could study at an MIT campus in Chennai. Right, or you could study at O.P. Jindal University in Chennai. As soon as that she who's very meritorious candidate, actually because of discrimination, you lose the protective employees, and soon soon would tend to be over the period of time. I don't even say universities should raise uh, funds to the stock market. We should get a sense of what are the what what. So consider, for instance, you know, uh, Elon Musk recently bought uh, a Twitter. And Tesla stock price, the Tesla valuation fell by about ten to twelve percent. Why? Because they don't think Elon Musk. Hey, you know, we have as much time and energy to do both to making good decisions. The market tells you that the that a lot must you know, that uh, Tesla would not be driven by good decisions. That examination has has fallen. Right. So I think when we see discriminatory activity, which is pushing out meritorious uh, candidates, we would like to see university valuations decline. Right. If a university, for instance, appoints a vice chancellor or IIT appoints a director who has a history of uh, you know uh, uh, you know. Uh, Fighting for the people of his own caste, or discriminating against women, and not actually recruiting people on the basis of merit. We'd like to see the valuation of that institute for costs have to be imposed. Ultimately, we have to understand that the demand curve uh, for discrimination is downward sloping, like the demand curve for most other goods, and we have to figure out ways to raise the cost to reduce the quantity of discrimination. And again, as, as I sort of said, there are two ways: there is the market process, and there is the political process. I've engaged in the political process a little bit. It's costly. And uh, my solution, to, especially the young doctoral students, is to avoid it <laughs> as much as you as you can. But that's about all I have to say. Let me let me stop here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for Yes. Second observation is that it's not merely 
And that is not in your body. Because it is accumulated capital that is being destroyed for your body. And you are ready to do that. And others are not ready to do that. So, I was happy to see today when I was to see this library and I saw Amit was put some like, slides as part of the anniversary of the first anniversary of it. It's extremely very rare moment for me. I remember from no, it's, it's, it's around um, 20 years ago. Now Amit is described and people are people are unhappy, they have to do it. So things are changed. But it's not in the case of you know understanding it in economic terms. You see, there are two frameworks we have in understanding this technology. What is of course based for this technology? Human 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 condition in the sense of discriminating others. Whether you are meant to have really to speak for me, that's the tendency. A caste has given you an, 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 an easy way to discriminate. That is, a caste has given you to discriminate. So, another thing is the dance. How do you How do you look at these things? How do you look at the dance? The two dance in the sense that no matter you are professionally qualified or otherwise, you need to, you are prejudiced with certain things that certain people belong to certain castes are not qualified. Even though they have a professional equality. Yeah, it's very interesting to uh, cite a book, The Beauty of uh, where he talks about uh, there are two qualifications for women. One is professional qualification, and another is the beauty qualification. You should be, you should be, you should be have beauty, and then you should have much. You should then be practice. So, while you are extant, that's I think of everybody. The things that you guys can is were equally committed to who would you choose? You're a if you're a person who is driven by the idea of justice, you would choose the very least, you know, economically and socially backward person belongs to that. But I didn't want to be that. If you are a, a person who is in some of the system, with silent himself or himself, this institution will choose. That way. That is the system. And with the, with the support of this person only, the interview board, the interview board, you know, interview board, uh, prejudicing and uh, uh, behaving and discriminating the person. So it's inclusion. It's an inclusion and inclusion, inclusionary exclusion. That is the thing. We are all included, but at the interest of the hegemonic apocalypse. Thanks, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the You want to respond now? Okay, let's go. I just wanted to ask if there's a possibility of anything, some kind of a violation with this. Uh, I think, since you mentioned that, let's not take the stage with that. Can we do it ourselves? We need a violation with that. And I think, for example, the OP Sveta signs. And just look at that. I think it's possible for us to actually create a valuation of books which would tell us exactly how each institution say, take this one state care and allow us to evaluate uh, the uh, anti caste uh, measures, uh, maybe not just in admissions extra funding, also in the other systems, of courses, course content. Uh, etc. It's for the any the extra curricular activities taken up. Is it possible for us to create something like that? So that every admissions, every time we have every year, the time of the year when admissions start, we can put this out. What that be a good idea? And can we really do this? Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, 
uh, you know, like without any push, uh, without any, uh, like, I mean, out of the generous uh, will of the market, quote unquote market. Uh, because if uh, stock markets were to fall uh, by the virtue of uh, discrimination, Indian stock markets should not even exist. There should be no building card, uh, uh, no road card, uh, 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 what is it, dollar seat or whatever. Uh, because uh, the Indian uh, uh, corporate system and Indian uh, private uh, ownership system is uh, reduced with uh, caste discrimination. And uh, we have seen uh, so many uh, data on uh, how the, most of the uh, corporate uh, CEOs and the corporate uh, uh, entities are uh, owned by uh, and only a very handful of uh, uh, upper elite class, uh, caste uh, uh, as well men, I would say. Like, I mean, like, only upper elite caste men. And even women representation is uh, very, very lacking. So if the market has to respond to, or stock markets have to respond to caste discrimination, it would be, like, it would not have happened. And uh, to say, like, I mean, uh, that's all, like, I mean, if people's movement only have represented, ensure that uh, representation happens, even in case of, so I've seen Dr. Vipin mention that Tamil Nadu is a progressive state, but IIT is a progressive institution. So, but I would say that, like, I mean, even Tamil Nadu, uh, only the people's movement has been able to ensure sustain percent reservation, that too, only in uh, government institutions. Uh, I can definitely say that uh, I'm from Tamil Nadu, I'm from Chennai, uh, the technical, the, the most uh, popular, the uh, most famous technical education setup of uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, only the 50 percent seats which are uh, maintained by government, which are affiliated to uh, uh, Anna University, that is where the reservation is followed. Remain 50 percent seats, the uh, private institutions never follow uh, reservations in uh, Tamil Nadu technical education. And uh, uh, like I mean, uh, whatever be the index, like I mean, the people's movement in the Tamil Nadu for social justice, that is what has ensured this thing. And, uh, all over the world also we can see like only people's movement, like I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you can quote the examples of affirmative actions in US and even that is I think you should consider that it's a result of the famous civil, civil liberties movement uh, in uh, US, which was ensured that, uh, that such affirmative actions are even followed by private institutions in uh, USA. And uh, I, I, I kind of have to go, uh, like I mean, under, like I mean, uh, this thing, like I mean, all the civil liberties star ones uh, never supported any market oriented uh, solutions from Rosa Parks to Martin Luther King to Malcolm X to QP uh, uh, Newton. Like nobody you can go to uh, the market oriented uh, solutions. And even in uh, India, like I mean, Peria uh, or Ambedkar never supported market solution for uh, the liberation of uh, the state. I and mean, I just want to finish it with one quote, like I mean, it is true that when a state refrains from intervention, what remains is liberty. To whom and for whom is this liberty? Obviously, for landlords to increase rent and capitalists to increase hours of work and reduce wages. What is called liberty from the control of the state is merely another name for dictatorship of private player. This is by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. So, we have actually four more questions. Asad now, so we take two more questions before we thank you. So, you are active as people responding. Or, <laughs> please, <laughs> just time manage. <laughs> yes. We can. No, yes. So this question makes me want to be a faculty. I mean, I would just say, I would love to teach. I would love to teach a whole course to respond to your uh, I don't know if you invite me. I can sometimes. But uh, the idea is not, as Smith says, it's not from the benevolence of the viewer, viewer the butcher, and the baker, that we get your food. But from the pers their pursuit of their self -interest. So when we seek something from the market, Right? We are not seeking goodwill from a particular individual. When you seek something from the government, you may be seeking a certain goodwill from a particular individual. But it's when you seek from something from the market, you are not seeking the goodwill of a particular individual. You are seeking an outcome which would, hope, which would result as those individuals pursue their self-interest. More specifically, consider a profit-motivated system of education. And consider a factor they want to be fairly meritorious. Right? Now, if you choose as the owner of the institution, as the shareholder of the institution, not to hire him or her because of her caste, right, and you want to express your caste preference, suddenly you have to give up what's a profit. So you have to choose whether you want to express your caste preference or you want to make some profit and be able to you know, buy shoes or rent a bigger house. So you are picking against yourself. And it is in such a setting that when you pick it against your own self, then you start realizing that expression of caste 
have to be ready for because I won't express them otherwise. Right? So, indeed, this is what when we look at the market, we cannot look at the market. The market is just a collection of people. Right? And again, the results will depend on the particular institutional arrangement. Right? The institutional arrangements are such that only people who have certain licenses or only particular religious or caste groups get funds of the government and are allowed to open politics, then the outcome of that market would be very different from a market in which, which we would call a contestable market, where there is a relatively, relative ease of entry and exit. But thank you very much. I mean, that, that made my, made my day. Thanks. Uh -huh. What you said that the market in our state, but that's true. You have car made as a vector. There are, you know, car company vectors. But you also have, as well as the last of the recruited, private university across the country. And if the market was on the right to follow this, why are we over there? But what we see there is not even forget uh, the scheduled class shifting time, not even the middle class object, because only the very select elites that are being used. So it's not a you know, discrimination, I don't know what it's not even for that. Because there are elite elites that are totally over. But if you, if you go back there, there are people from Asian and Mark of the Day. How do you defend that? That's something that we do. They have to keep in standard. Second place, uh, it's a current to uh, those who speak to you. Uh, I think of one of the legal donations that have flexibility of showing their Okay, so this is a more public matter of fact. I will just to pass the right to the The question of the rights first place. And the data that we showed how the school is following the field. And then you have eyes and pillows. How do you mean eyes? Because you read them. But read them as students. Then why do you read them? Send them to me. Why do you get questions? So, second thing is that how do you read the data as or in this over here? Because Christians are not privileged to any of the constitutional rights that are given on this. It's only in the coming to the sun. And how do you read that data? When there is no justification. Because I do see the very difference. But to have to understand the fact that there is a larger problem over there. Or not to be the verdicts in the week. Or why is it that they are not getting the justification? So the verdicts should not be able to get the problem. But there is a mechanism. Who is this in line for the Indian people to be in charge of the public sector? And there is no other way for the public sector. How do you understand that? The public sector. And how do you understand that? Excuse me. Now, the other thing is that the other data, you have to have the question that you can have data provided in the middle. But that is the other number of 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 the other Sembrong perlu tu naik bandar perut naik pelajar nak ni kalau presiden nak ni kerja kerja kan kita dah. Apa ada ni dah nak kita ini tak kita boleh kita. Apa ada ni? Sistem itu bawa dengan kita separated kerja kan kita sendiri. Sistem itu sendiri mana? Besi itu dah ni ni dah kita siaga ni cuma. Apa ada ni kita bandar perut? Just want to add. मतलब ये कैटेगरी क्या होती है और उनके रिसर्वेशन होती है इसी रिसर्वेशन अंदर है ये ये कैटेगरी क्या तो कैप्चर है तो नहीं बस ये बेसी है तो बट तो नाथ
Uh, now, it's question for the floor because we have to take a couple of questions online that we continue the conversation with the team. So. Um, I think I would leave myself to say any more because. The points I wanted to make have already been covered by the previous speakers here. But uh, I just wanted to add, like you were talking about, uh, like you mentioned that the uh, uh, political route is very difficult. But then what I can, uh, from whatever experience and really experience I've had in life, at least that route is possible. I mean, if we push for private institutions, any chance of accountability is gone. Because with the government, at least even if it's difficult, on some level it's possible. But the private institutions are not force accountability out of them. So that and about the point about markets responding to problems. So I believe on uh, there have been various studies and various stories which talk about how markets won't respond to just profits. The whole idea of case for discrimination is that the employer gets some utility output of discrimination itself. So how long do you believe that markets will respond to your new profit and will not we, you know, sticking to their case of discrimination when the chances of people coming from upper class or from the upper class of society who are in positions of power in the first place have already been there. Right? So once they are there at the gates, how are we to ensure that the gates will not be closed on other spaces? And how are we to show accountability when those gates are closed? That's it. Okay. Just one, two, one, two, one question from online. It's connected to, I think it's a thing. Uh, even though the pure capitalism ensures that 21 years labor productivity, in reality, the market thrives on existing casteism and gender discrimination. In private jobs, we do not have any reservation. How can opening up higher education institutions to market uh, will bring cost parity? So, question. But there are a few other questions. I mean, we have time to take all the questions. I think it's um, another question um, related to that. Uh, so, I guess. Um, so, okay, the question is uh, again, we get covered in May. So, a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Given the anti politics of teachers' associations, with solid affiliation to mainstream political parties, yeah. how practical do you think is the implementation of fund direct transfer to students rather than institutions in states like Canada? So we just open that question. You have to still respond. Everything. Yes. <laughs> then you continue. <laughs> and then you have tea. So we have IT after it. So let me do one. This gentleman here who asked this question and all that. Some groups within the are taking very good. In uh, Northern India, in particular, the other of the other can see taking a large substantial share of the pie that was meant to be doing the groups. So so that the other would be groups, you know, got dissatisfied and went to other groups. Now this is the generic part of the collective party. And that is going to happen again and again when you enter into the political process. Groups that uh, you know stick you know, stick together and the task is still over. The subtask will take a size of the size of the share of the power. It's then to be um with the Kerala thing, uh, I think the comment that was made about uh, you know all the seats being typically bought at well known prices. Uh, so then possibly these low shares of uh, schedule class and schedule tribes reflect uh, low low asset ownership. Because the large, these large amounts of money are typically paid by uh, you know, uh, mortgaging assets in you know, either formal or informal sector. If so you don't have land, you can't you know, borrow 20 lakhs or 30 lakhs. So possibly it's just a meet, you know, some part of it is a reflection of discrimination, some part of it is a reflection of low asset ownership. Uh, and I, you know, I would say that if the fund actually went to students, is now what's happening is management don't care about the quality of the teacher, but they care about the students willing to pay you the most amount of money. But if you actually depend on student money, you don't have to care about the quality of the teacher department. And so in that sense, the market mechanism which you know, possibly puts some amount of check on, on you know, uh, I would make money. So, uh, but, so the, you know, so I, I put myself in a state position. I have no idea if that, you know, the market solve <laughs> uh, how we feel about things and how we treat others, right? Uh, human beings will be human beings. It's a question of comparative institutional analysis. Given a certain set of preferences that somebody has, 
what are the incentives under which they operate in the market and what are the incentives under which they operate uh, in a government system. And like you said, indeed, you know, once you have a private system, you do lose something. Right? You lose, for instance, the RTIs cannot be filed. I cannot go to the education ministry. They cannot issue a, a notice. So there are things to lose. And now the question is, if you just want to sort of reduce discrimination to the minimalistic possible, given people's preferences, right? The fact that you lose these political processes and leverages, are they outweighed by the competitive pressure that people face? My impression is possibly. I mean, it seems we are less uh, optimistic about it, right? So, uh, uh, so. We will wait, Ms. Sita Manaji, for whatever times. Thank you, sir. So, we have seen how de-reduction takes it in India, higher education issues on its deteriorating. In the very beginning, how uh, OB Ravindran sir very nicely present the data. And uh, Dr. Vivian really detailed very nicely present how discrimination affects the very educated students. So, on behalf of Center for Development Study, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Bipin P. Vipin and Mr. O. B. Ravindran for coming here and giving such a wonderful talk. Then, the chair, Dr. Desmond Hart, who very nicely chaired the session. I would like to thank all the faculty, staff, and the students who have come over here, both online and offline, and participated in the discussion. Thank you for their valuable time. Once again, 